Hey guys, welcome to Tabletop Warband's first painting video. We got a lot of requests about it in the comments and decided to start with the video tutorial on how to paint Astra Militarum as Starship Troopers. I know you were expecting another battle report today, but hold on for a little while longer as something is about to change. We are currently doing restructuring where we normally record videos and this has prevented us from doing a lot of things, including recording battles. It will be the same also for August, where we'll post a battle report and another painting video. But from late September or early October at the latest, we'll finally be able to post a video every Saturday, and there will be two battle reports and two painting videos every month. Also, we'll have the possibility to use the 3D printer again, so we'll finally have a lot more scenery on the battlefield. There will also be other news, but for the moment, let's focus on today's video. Before we start, if you are subscribed to the channel, welcome back! If you are not, subscribe, like and activate the bell. And now, let's get started! I always start with the black as base color, but if it's more convenient for you and you want to save time, you can also start with the mechanical standard grey. As you will see, it's the main color of the entire Cadian uniform. For convenience, I use Citadel paints, but you can use matching colors from other brands if you like. To start, take mechanical standard grey and with a large brush pass it all over the uniform, clothes and armor. There is no need to be precise and remember to dilute the color a little first. I also like to use this color for the small bottle on the belt and the boots. Once finished, the only black parts left will be the skin, the last gun, the mask if the model has it, and secondary parts like the bayonet holster and the spare magazine. The tedious part is over and now we can move on to the fun part. As wash we use Noon Oil. Again, there is no need to be precise. Pass the shade on all the parts you have just painted. Be careful not to let the color accumulate in one spot. Let the model dry completely. It will take about 20 minutes or half an hour. Once dry, it should be like this. The common colors of the uniform are done. Now let's go to differentiate the armor from the clothes. We use a more precise brush and start with a layer of Dawnstone to pass only on the clothes. Don't touch the armor. When using this color, try to let the underlying dark gray show in the folds of the clothes. Don't cover it completely. Paint the trousers, sleeves and the fabric seen under the armor and behind the neck. Try to be precise and take your time, but don't be afraid to make mistakes, everything can be corrected. Well, we have painted the clothes, so now we can focus on the armor. We use again mechanical standard grey only on the armor, the helmet and boot protection. You will see that once you are done with this color, the model will already look good. There you have it, the main base colors of the Cadian uniform are finished. Now we can move on to the secondary pieces. We will use Abaddon Black to paint the last gun, the belt, the spare magazine and the mask if he has it. Be careful with the belt, but if you get black on the clothes or the armor, don't worry, and just correct it using the colors we used earlier. The model should now look much cleaner and without any misplaced colors. We can therefore give the base color to all the eagle shaped badges. For this we need Corax White. There is one on the last gun, one on the helmet, one on the canteen and a small one on the chest. You will need a small brush to be very precise. The white contrasts greatly with the grey and black of the model and creates a nice effect that is pleasing to the eye. Next step is the skin finally. 
I use Dumble Brown as a base. In this model only the ends are exposed, but it's very likely that in your case there is also the face. Paint every exposed part of the skin with this color, including the face. There are other layers to add for the skin, but for now let's move on to another base color. We take care of the few metallic parts. I use Lead Belcher as a base color. There are not many parts to paint, just a few details on the last gun, including the barrel, magazine and handle. Some models have the bayonet, also make the blade in that case. Here I only have the hilt and the pommel. And don't forget the belt buckle, that's important! We have finally finished all the base colors of the model. Some Cadians have blue details, and in that case I use McCrack Blue. This model, for example, has the lenses of the glasses, but there could also be the lenses of the rifle sight or something else. For example, the plasma gun, but that's for another video. Once we are done with the remaining details, we can finally shade the parts we just painted after the uniform, using Null Oil again. The parts on which we are going to use the shade are the skin, the metal parts, the lenses and the white badges. Why did we use the shade separately if it's the same one used before? There is no real reason. If you want, you can also decide to first paint all the base colors including the uniform and then pass the Null Oil on the whole model to save time. I prefer to compartmentalize and paint the uniform first and the accessories later, but it's just a matter of mental order, I think. Once the model is dry, it's time for the highlights, and let's start with the clothes. I use the Life Color Camouflage Series UA403. It's not Citadel, but you can use any light grey, such as Administratum Grey, for example. To make the highlights, take a thin pointed brush and paint with the color along all the exposed edges. It will be easier to be precise if you use the side of the brush instead of the tip. I anticipate it right now, we will use the same color to highlight the armor as well, but as you have seen before I like to do it separately. So if you want to save time, highlight both clothes and armor, if you are not sure and just want to follow me step by step, then just do the clothes for now. As you can see, with highlights the model has a much more interesting effect. For the models that have lenses, we use Teclis Blue and we paint the lower part of the lenses, leaving a little of dark blue in the upper part, where there is the helmet that creates the shadow. This will create the reflection on the lenses. Let's go back to the skin and paint a layer of Cadian Fleshton. I would say that given the name, it's perfect for this model. Paint all the exposed skin while leaving the Dumble Brown to be seen in the parts where the light should not arrive, such as between the fingers for example, or under the cheekbones. I tend not to make white eyes, they make the miniature too weird. I prefer to leave a thin black line. It will be the final shade to create the illusion that there are eyes. We are well underway with this step. If you haven't done this before, we can do the highlights on the armor. The color is the same used for the clothes. UA403. This time, however, it will be used on the edges of the helmet, shoulder pads, body armor and boot covers. The uniform is completed. The skin can also be highlighted, and I use Kiss the Flash for this. Paint with this color only the exposed parts of the skin, such as the upper part of the fingers or the main features of the face, the eyebrows, the raised part of the nose, the cheekbones and the lips. If you want, you can leave the skin like this, I do one last step that you will see shortly, but it's completely optional. Already as it is now, it's a good result. With the Dawnstone we can highlight the black. Use this color to paint all the edges of the last gun and all those parts you painted black.
In my case, there is also the mask to do, which is practically the main part of the face. With the black completed, we can also do the metal parts of the model. In this case, we use Iron Breaker. I light all the silver edges of the last gun and the various metal accessories, including the belt buckle. Little by little, the model is coming to life. With the white scar, we take care of the edges of the various badges, so as to bring honor and splendor to the symbol of the Astra. Also, paint a faint line on the bottom of the eyeglass lenses to create the reflection. The model is much more beautiful this way. This is the optional skin step I was talking about earlier. I like this skin a bit darker and more experienced, on the other hand, they are in battle, aren't they? A light veil of Reykland flash shade is enough, if you also pass it on the face, it will give more depth to the expression of the miniature. We are almost at the end, we can finally put the decals on the shoulder pads. You choose the ones you want, we need a symbol and a regimental number. Use a cutter to cut the decals, but be careful not to cut yourself, remember that you only have 10 fingers and you need them to paint. Cadians usually have the symbol on the right shoulder pad and the number on the left. My Cadians have a different lore feature, so mine have inverted decals. You choose where to put them, they are your models after all, and you have absolute decision about it. Before putting the decals, however, we pass a layer of gloss varnish on the shoulder pad. This serves to make the decals stick better. Try to be as precise as possible and only paint the shoulder pads. Then, with the use of tweezers, immerse the symbol in the water for about 10 seconds or so. Once this is done, help yourself with a wet brush to move the decal on the shoulder pad you have chosen. Remember, the symbol on the right if you want to do SDGW, I have it on the left. Place it in the position where you want it, when it's in the right place, use a tissue to wipe off the excess water. Do it gently or you risk moving the decal. Once you have put the decals on both shoulder pads, the model is almost complete. To secure the decals you just placed, only after the model has dried well, use Lamia Medium over the shoulder pads. This will also serve to take away the shine created by the gloss varnish. Only paint the shoulder pads and be careful to be very delicate with the brush, or you risk moving the decals that are not yet well fixed. If you want to be sure, you can also do a second layer once it's dry. And there you have it! The miniature is done! If you want, you can paint the base with Morphan Brown, and you can choose whatever texture you prefer. I use simple sand and grass for them, the green makes a nice contrast to the grey of the miniature. And here is my infantry soldier of the 900 Kadia regiment in all its glory. I'm really happy that many people are interested in how I painted my Cadians, I care a lot about them, they are my main army. This is the first painting video of this channel and it was really interesting to be able to create it. Let me know what you think, and if you liked it, know that there will be many more after this. Tabletop Warbands has fully immersed itself in the hobby and there's no turning back. And with this we conclude. If you like our content and want to help us grow the channel, we have an account on the platform Buy Me A Coffee where you can support us with donations. Any help you can give us to improve the channel is welcome. We are counting on you. The link is in the description. And if you have come this far, write the word 900 in the comments to let us know. You are the best! And if you are not yet subscribed, subscribe to the channel! If you liked the video, leave a like and write us in the comments, we are always curious to know what you think. That's it guys, see you next video!